Hello and welcome to our Sunday Gospel reading, reflection and prayer for the third Sunday of Advent. When people called to John the Baptist asking, what must we do? He gives them the most reasonable common sense reply. He says, in effect, live reality. God is asking you to be faithful to the ordinary circumstances of your life. He will make himself evident there. And with that advice, a feeling of expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. The Baptist exhorts us by making us more attentive to our own hearts. He tells us of the one who will answer all the needs of the human heart. We need not be anxious about what we must do, for the Lord is as near as the next moment and whatever it brings. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, the multitudes asked John, What then shall we do? And he answered them, He who has two coats, let him share with him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptised and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than is appointed you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Rob no one by violence or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all men questioned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he were the Christ, John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. As the feast of Christmas approaches, so does the joy of our waiting increase. For this reason, the whole liturgy of this third Sunday of Advent, called precisely Gaudete Sunday, is an invitation to joy. The words of the entrance antiphon already resound with this invitation to joy. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. How much joy should fill the Christian's heart at the thought that Jesus is not only close, but is already present in us in a continuous communion of love. His sacramental presence, especially in the Eucharist, and the intimate and ineffable presence in our souls, constitute the greatest source of joy for the Christian. The Christian who has God in his heart has joy in his heart. In reality, true joy, which lasts, can only come from God. The other joys of this world are transitory and almost always leave the heart dissatisfied. And the worldly joys that are the fruit of sin leave in the soul a fearful emptiness and a depressing sadness that man tries to hide under a mask of noise, external and illusory pleasures. In this regard, the behaviour of so many Christians who do not live the joy of the Christian message to the full is profoundly striking. Always anxious and worried about so many things, they easily forget to seek in God the source of true joy. The saints 
are the most credible witnesses of Christian joy. Through their lives and works, they make us understand that only in God is found the secret of true joy. In the writings of Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, we read this encouraging expression. Live, therefore, in a holy joy. In these last days of preparation for Holy Christmas, let us accept the exhortation of the liturgy and of St. Pio, and putting aside all discouragement, all sadness and concern, let us approach confession to rediscover the joy of Christ's divine presence in us, lost or diminished by our sins. Joy is the certitude that comes into the world because it has been touched by the mystery of Christ. In this joy, we now pray to the Father. For the Church, that she may bring good news to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, and liberty to captives. For all nations, that they may heed the message of Christ and embrace the way of the Gospel. For the disabled, that the Lord may strengthen them by our assistance and make them firm through our support and concern. For the aged, the unemployed and the ill, that the Lord may provide them with relief and encouragement. For the faithful departed, that they may come to enjoy the vision of God face to face. For the grace this week to be free of anxiety and to be generous in showing kindness. We bring all our prayers to Our Lady, Star of the Sea. O Mary, Star of the Sea, Light of every ocean, Guide seafarers across all dark and stormy seas, That they may reach the haven of peace and light Prepared in him who calmed the sea. As we set forth upon the oceans of the world and cross the deserts of our time, show us, O Mary, the fruit of your womb, for without your Son we are lost. Pray that we will never fail on life's journey, that in heart and mind, in word and deed, in days of turmoil and in days of calm, we will always look to Christ and say, Who is this that even wind and sea obey him? Amen. Loving Father, may your peace that surpasses all understanding ever guard our hearts and minds through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us, keep us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.